Hi, I'm Mike. I'm sitting down here with Ross and David from the South Bend Software Craftsmanship User Group. Uh, we're going to just talk a little bit about the user group that they run. And um, so, can you just tell us a little bit about what do you guys do with the South Bend User Group? Um, obviously, it's in South Bend, but can you give a little bit more details? Sure. So I'll start with a little bit of history. We used to have a .NET user group that was dying, and we decided that, uh, that we needed to make a, a language agnostic, a technology agnostic. And uh, we had a couple of people going up to Chicago to yeah. their uh, software craftsmanship user group, and uh, we liked what we saw, and we connected with some of the people there to get ideas and, and assistance. And right. we just started, started the group in South Bend. And um, we meet once every two months, and we... We, we t a typical meeting is uh, a speaker talks for, for a little while, and then we just have open discussion afterwards right. with the speaker. Um, like if I had to give advice for, for the smaller cities like South Bend, um, reach out to the, the software craftsmanship community in a, in a big city near you, because Chicago has been instrumental in helping us. They've been sending out speakers like Uncle Bob and, and people from Tiva Group on, and, and uh, Eight Flight's interested in helping us out as well. So definitely look for help. There's, there's plenty of people in the community who are willing to help. Yeah. So, like you said, you, you go on a kind of a uh, semi-monthly cycle. Um, why do you guys go bi-monthly? I mean, um, semi-monthly versus doing a monthly schedule? That seems to be kind of a, a common pattern. Is, I think part of it's like Russ mentioned. We were talking earlier just for the workload. Yeah. Uh, but I think that our goal would be to do it more often, and we're moving towards having weekly meetings to. Uh, we get moving into the Ruby world, and I imagine there are our goal will be at least once a month with the whole team uh, to do one of these speakers or something like that. So, you know, I'm curious, like you, you explicitly said, Ruby, what is it about? Why do you, why do you gravitate towards Ruby versus just um, any other? So, Python or so our town is primarily .NET, so it's just introduce some diversity right. and a uh, different different school of thought and uh, Ruby has kind of a community mindset anyways and so just to, to bring find those who do know Ruby that we're not connecting with bring those into into our group would also increase our sense of community as well I think for if the Microsoft guys are used to having a Microsoft-ish kind of community right and we'd be able to move it's harder to find the same sort of thing with PHP or, or Python there's not as Close knit, but we want to move out of a compiled language. I did anyway. Move the team out of a compiled language into a dynamic language, and just see what would happen there. And Ruby's, you move into another place where there's already a right. home. There's a house there built. Oh yeah, so it's 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 you have kind of a preconceived notion of the community that comes from um, kind of an established Microsoft um, developer base, and you're looking at well, where else could we go from that? And looking at the Ruby community, which is been really active. Are you saying that that seems to be kind of appealing, like an, an easier transition because you kind of have an idea of where you're going to, not kind of a bunch of atoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to stress that that the, the software craftsmanship group is technology agnostic. Right. We still have speaking. Our speakers talk about uh, either soft skills or, or higher level, you know, our themes. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, but um, we also need to have the people get used to getting together and. and Pair program and stuff like that, and so we're using Ruby since it's a new language as an avenue to do that. So okay. we're going to teach people Ruby, get them together, and do katas together, learn how to do TDD and stuff like that. So it's that's just the focus we're taking. And uh, you know, we, we did have a little brief conversation before, uh, and, and we talked about how you know South Bend, you're uh, kind of a, a, a it's a it's more of a residential community where people are commuting to and from. Uh, South Bend, so you have a little bit of a challenge dealing with trying to get people in in the evenings or in the early mornings. Um, you know, like what is your uh, attendance of like when you're trying to do an evening meeting? Does it usually seem to be uh, uh, over overly uh, impacted by the fact that people are commuting to South Bend versus sure, working since, right there? Since we meet once every two months, our uh, meeting attendance is usually 30 or so, which which isn't bad, but for the, the more collaborative building type meetings that we have, like a Code and Coffee, which Code and Coffee is usually in the morning, which we have trouble getting people to come out. So for this Ruby exercise we're gonna we're gonna partake in here, we're gonna do it during lunches. Okay. So we'll just meet at a at a kind of a common place consistently once a week. And we think we'll get a lot better attendance at that lunchtime. Yeah, yeah. Lunch is a, having a family myself I could I, I can attest to 
those midday breaks are a little bit easier to, to accommodate Swing, the yeah. schedule. Yeah. Okay, well, um, you guys have a website. Um, we'll be posting that along with the, uh, the link to vote. Well, what is the website? Uh, just well, actually, we have a LinkedIn group. Oh, you have a LinkedIn group? Yeah, okay. but we, we are evaluating different uh, methods. Of, okay, uh, is it a public message. group that we'll be able to yes. link to? Okay, great. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Ross and David. Appreciate you sitting down with me. Take care.